Hare Krishna. Today we live in a world of moral relativism where people increasingly say that if you think something is wrong, then, if, then that's wrong for you. But that's not necessarily wrong for me. So real morality has been increasingly relativized. However, what is the result of such things that uh, immorality becomes increasingly difficult to identify? So in one culture, say wrongdoers are uh, burnt alive and they said this is what our culture, our tradition tells us to do and this is what we are going to do. And can we say that this is, uh, this is right? So, uh, what is right and what is wrong, unless it is identified, uh, how can we move forward? So morality becomes tough to, uh, morality and immorality become very tough to identify because everything becomes subjective. And then, see, uh, it's only when somebody agrees that something is wrong, then it can be corrected. So suppose, if we consider we are driving on a road, and uh, if, while driving on the road, if somebody says, oh, you can have your traffic rules, I'll have my traffic rules. There'll be chaos. If somebody is driving on the wrong lane, they will just say that, oh, that is your idea that the lane is wrong. For me, this is a right lane. So it becomes, wrong doing becomes very, uh, it's become tougher even to rectify. Even if somebody wants to correct themselves, how do they even know what is correct? How do they go about rectifying it? If they're not even sure, if they're not even able to identify it clearly. And rectifying involves a conscious effort uh, to uh, correct the consequences of the wrong we are doing. Sometimes we may be, we may be morally relativistic, but then when certain choices lead to catastrophic consequences, then we may, we may decide, no, I don't want to do this. We may rectify ourselves. But some, those same tendencies, may same conditionings may keep pushing us to do the same, the, push, the, push to the immoral things again and again. So ultimately, immorality needs to be purified. And moral relativism uh, doesn't hold anything as pure or anything as impure because purity itself is considered to be relative. And thus, uh, contact with the all-pure divine, which is the most powerful way to purify ourselves of our immoral urges, that becomes unavailable to people and thus uh, immorality becomes extremely difficult, becomes toughest to purify. And thus people stay lost in inner confusion or uh, inner confrontation, inner, in which they just get lost. So we need uh, to have a clear moral trajectory. The Bhagavad Gita cautions us against moral relativism when it states that asatyam apratishtham te jagadahura nishwaram aparaspara sambhutam kimanyat kama hai to come. At once, we reject the idea of any ultimate reality, any foundational truth, any overseeing divine. Then, whatever gives us pleasure becomes the sole barometer for deciding what is right and wrong. And this is 16.8 and 16.9 states, Etam drishtim avashtabhya nashtatmano alpa buddhaya prabhavantya ugra karmana kshayaya jagato ahitaha. Once such a vision is accepted, then everything becomes ruined. People act in ways that will destroy themselves and will destroy the world. So the Bhagavad Gita is ready to rescue us, to protect us from moral relativism by giving us a spiritual worldview which shows us morality not just as arbitrary but morality as that pathway which enables us to be, live a more a richer, a deeper, a more spiritual and more meaningful and fulfilling life. And thus with spiritual wisdom we can go beyond moral relativism. Thank you. Hare Krishna.